This is where the fun begins. Hello, welcome to the council. We begin tonight's meeting of the council by calling the council to order. Hello to everyone and thanks for joining us. The council is a live Twitch talk show podcast discussing Star Wars, The Old Republic. I'm Elise and with me are my fellow council members, Redna. Hi. <laughs> Sakari. Hey, everyone. And Magic Ace. Yo. <laughs> Tonight we're going to talk about esports. I hope that graphic is up. Oh, the graphic <laughs> is up. It's very chaotic. Yeah. We have one of the um, major league uh, major league gaming arenas here in my town. So Really? So they have a, they have a an arena specifically yeah. dedicated to esports. They two, they have at least two that I know of. Wow. Cuz major league gaming is like like a Major League. Yeah. A major League. It's yeah. I bigly they, popular. I thought they may sell out like, you know, like the local American Airlines Center or something. Sell it out. Fill it with uh, people and then do a gaming thing there. But if I uh -huh. don't know that they had dedicated facilities uh -huh. to this kind of thing. So very yeah. interesting. And uh, it's not surprising being that he owns it. Uh, Bioware? Nope. Uh, Blizzard? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Blizzard owns Major League Gaming, which is why they have a WoW tournament. Well, we can get into that later. <laughs> oh, yes. We're going to need to. That's for sure. <laughs> so, since we're getting to that later, after our live broadcast, you can find our recorded episodes everywhere podcasts are found and on our YouTube channel. Just click our panel below and visit our website, which is thecouncilswotor.com. You can also check us out on our socials, which is facebook.com slash council SOTOR, or we have Twitter at the council SOTOR. Don't forget Twitch, which is the council SOTOR. We also have patreon.com slash council SOTOR. And wait, there's more. You can Google us. <gasps> oh. So we're like everywhere. You should do that. It's great. Thanks. Or you can use your own search provider of whatever choice you prefer. <laughs> yeah, we, like, like, hey. we totally made a, a deal with Google. Like we're in with Google. We even have our own no. Gmail account. That's how cool we are. Yeah, we do. We have that. <laughs> but I say Google because I'm looking at Google right here. It's literally open in front of my face. So. Uh -huh. All right. Um, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to uh, the council tonight. Glad to have you all with us. Uh, feel free to share and chat as always. Uh, we, if there's anything that jumps out at us, we will be sure to put it in the show. Uh, we, we love comments, so feel free to do this journey with us. We want you to be a part of things. And uh, definitely welcome to all of you who have joined us in chat so far. Uh, let's get started tonight with our icebreaker. The icebreaker is just a question where uh, we kind of just dip our toe in the water, get a little bit of discussion going about um, the, the subject of the night. Um, tonight's question is, what is your general attitude on eSports? Redna, what about you? Okay, so actually it's multifaceted, right? On the one hand, if I'm thinking of eSports in conjunction with, say, Twitch, right? Like, hey, we're in eSports because there are people that stream it on Twitch. Like, to me, that whole avenue of excitement is less much. But actually, when it comes to Okay, so prior to my time in Star Wars The Old Republic, I was actually massively into League of Legends, like big time. That was the game that carried me from my exodus from World of Warcraft in 2010 until this game launched. And I was like pretty hardcore. And then I started going to um, the, well, it used to be called PAX Prime and now it's PAX West up in the Seattle area. And... I actually got to go and attend one of these big finalist tournaments, and that is actually jaw-dropping. It is so remarkable how watching a group of people playing a video game against one another in a huge arena environment like that, it has, because of the enthusiasm for the game and these fans that are so diehard for their teams, it really does feel like an actual sport like going to a football game or whatever. The crowds are cheering. They're screaming about different, you know, moves that the players did or combinations and team activity and everything. Like it's from that perspective in attendance, it's the kind of the same way I feel actually about real world sports. I really very rarely watch anything on TV, but going to and patroning those kinds of big tournament events is actually thoroughly exciting. I enjoy it a lot. So that's my general attitude. 
So, Redna, you would go to a sports game and enjoy yourself? Is that what you're telling me? If you went to go to football? <laughs> of course. How interesting. Woo. I, you heard Seattle it here Seahawks first, folks. For the win. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness me. He's going to get that started. If you get Magic A started on that, you won't stop. <laughs> Speaking of Magic, what? <laughs> My love of real sports is a totally different topic, but just so you know, it gets a lot of hype when I stream. Okay, that's what people come yes. to talk about. They don't care what I'm playing. They're it's just true. like, hey, a little bit of trash talk. Magic talk. About sports. A little, little bit of trash talk is good. Uh, what is your yeah. thoughts on esports? My thoughts on esports are, what are esports? Because I didn't know what they were <laughs> until we decided to do this topic. <laughs> I it's a quick care research. Less. Yeah. Um, I only watch people stream because either A, I'm currently interested at that moment in learning something different, or I'm putting on makeup or doing dishes and I'm out of Netflix shows to watch. Or it's a friend of mine, and I'm like, oh, they're streaming. I'll go support their stream. Um, so watching, like, an arena full of people, watching people play, not really my jam. So my thought is, um, if that's what floats your boat, cool. Right. <laughs> All right, dare I ask Elise what she thinks about this. <laughs> so it depends on what they're playing if I like esports. Really? Um, yes. Or, for example, I'm not really into League of Legends, but just like uh, Redna got to watch at PAX Prime slash West, I got to watch the um, uh, College League of Leg Legends um, Championship at PAX East. And it just so happened um, the very first day of PAX East, um, Ohio State, the Ohio State University was playing against Michigan State. Ah, there you go. And it was, <laughs> I went down and I was like, yeah, I don't even like League of Legends, but I'm going to stand here and cheer from the team because it's OSU. Um, against, it wasn't the Michigan, but it was the other Michigan, like the other white meat. But anyway. <laughs> um, so wow. that, that was... That was a lot of. That was a lot of fun. I felt um, like I could take this in a different direction. I'm, yeah, I'm the other not. white meat. I'm so offended. I feel like we're going to struggle not to talk about sports tonight. <laughs> we're gonna be like, yeah, because right now I totally, I totally want to throw down some like uh, statistics here, and I'll be like, well, guess what my teams have been doing. But I'm like, oh yeah, I don't have a team. I don't care about this. <laughs> mm. um, the other thing that I really enjoy too is um, if you get. Um, good um, callers, like people calling the match, it really enhances my yes. experience of the match. Yes. Um, so I was watching, uh, like I mentioned, that arena, um, Destiny was trying, and I think they still are trying, but Destiny 2 is struggling, but they want to make the PvP, Destiny 2 PvP, in eSport. Mm -hmm. And so they had um, a demonstration like match here at the arena here in my town. And um, uh, one of the um, fairly well-known uh, streamers for the game was calling it with a couple of other people. And it was actually really good. Um, he knew the players. He knew the game, obviously, because he streams. He's a semi-pro or used to be a pro gamer. So, I mean, it was just, it was, he did a really nice job. It was actually right. entertaining to watch. So um, much like you know, a regular, you know, football game or whatever, the people calling the game can make or break that, especially if they're, if my OSU is playing because everybody rags on my team. I just want to know, does Joe Buck come announce for these Joe things? Buck. Because I might yeah, listen. Troy then. Aikman. <laughs> yeah. I might well, go listen that, then. That's the thing too, right? I mean, anybody that's watched a football game or a college football game, you know, you usually have the one commentator who's, you know, he's really knowledgeable and he's like, well, you see that they're doing this in order to do this. I bet they're going to sub this guy in because he's better for this run, you know, running play versus a passing play. And the other guy's like, OK, now it looks like the quarterback just threw the ball in the air to that other guy. That's called a pass, right? <laughs> no, that's John Madden. You're, you're channeling I'm John Madden. I'm talking about John, John Madden. Madden. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you called it. OK, 
Kid, Kid but Lee you need that kind of he person. He does a really good impression for me, so we could always have Kid Lee come call for this with his John Madden impression. I would go watch then. You guys could get me in at that point. But that's exactly it, is you need both of those people. And obviously the guy that says, oh, well, that's called a pass, right? Obviously they know more about it than that, but you need that kind of person present with the guy that's talking knowledgeably for anybody that is knowledgeable, but you need the other guy that can put it into plain conversation so that others can understand Oh, so that's why they're getting excited. You know, yes. <laughs> like, hey, rather than getting five yards, they got 25 yards. That is a big deal. It makes sense because I can at least get the numbers, even if I don't know the rest of the rules. <laughs> yeah, because everyone's in your audience. No kidding. And yeah, that way you reach everybody. Right. Like the whole gamut. And usually plays. it's that interplay, right? Because the guy that's playing the, the really dumb guy can totally be, you know, kind of mocked by the other guy. And that builds some humor and some personality between the two of them. Or otherwise, you know even self-deprecation like whoa you just threw a whole bunch of conversation at me i don't know what you're talking about so you're saying <laughs> they scored right <laughs> that's but, why uh, we're cheering yes then you, and, and then you always been... have that one guy as well who's like the savant he knows every statistic back to 1932 oh, yes. you know and every like, player yeah what, every there was the third play of the third game yeah, i don't today. believe that <laughs> I don't believe that. I think they've got a scrolling screen giving them all these stats, well, and so they, they look do. like they are spot oh, they on. Do. And you're like, bull crap, you're cheating. There are a lot of them, but I've met a lot in real life too. Like I'll meet, yeah. you know, when I was living on the East Coast, and I met somebody, you know, who I was like, oh yeah, my team's the Seahawks. Oh really, man? I remember in 1983 when so and so <laughs> did this, and their stats were this great, and blah blah blah. I'm like, yeah, I know. That was the last time we were any good. This is before we, you know, recently got good. But <laughs> times. Before the Rams moved from St. Louis, that was me. I was like, you remember way back when? And they're like, that was forever ago. I'm like, like, no, I, I wasn't That's when we were good. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> no, I was yeah, in we third had something, grade, yeah. I remember. <laughs> I was in third grade. I remember. It's fine. So, Elise, any more to say on eSports, just generally speaking? Uh, yeah, there actually has to be, the game itself has to be exciting. Agreed. I, yeah. I, I can't watch something that's, we can talk about it later. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, let, let me pivot on that for what I'd like I got to say to this that as well. <laughs> yeah, because there are games I, I've seen them do esports, but I know nothing about the game. And if I if I am completely and utterly clueless about the game, it doesn't matter what stats you're dropping. It doesn't matter what names you're calling. It doesn't. I, it doesn't. Not, it does not mean anything to me. It's just a guy talking over the top of whatever is going on on screen. So it, it helps for me to at least have some general understanding as to what this game is about. That's one caveat. And for me, another th aspect that kind of, it's something I'm still exploring and unpacking within myself, but I tend to push back against anything I, I perceive as emotional um, manipulation in a lot of ways. And I think hype, hype tends to, fall into that category sometimes they're hyping oh this is amazing blah 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 you know they're, they're they're talking really loud they're talking really fast oh this is amazing oh oh you know and i'm looking at this going what what is you know and why should i feel <laughs> I why should i feel as excited i do the other and back again and nothing significant <laughs> exactly. happened <laughs> it's, it's like basketball That's like you know? college ball when they hit the drums <laughs> and they're like going really fast and you're all the people are beating on the bleachers and they're so excited i'm like half of you don't even know yeah. what just happened do it's you? Hype, <laughs> hype for hype's sake i think to me bothers me People are so, are so basically and pretty much everything about, that goes on during a soccer match <laughs> <laughs> because it's like yeah, 90 it minutes of, of two points. <laughs> yeah. I like it when they yell, go, though. That's yeah. I find it yeah. <laughs> and unfortunately, the American commentators suck at that. That's why you've yeah. always got to watch it in another football, language. Football, yeah. Yes. Watch football, don't watch soccer. <laughs> You yeah, watch I just it, don't like watch Spanish it all. language. The Spanish channel. That's the I mean, I, I, I don't it. mind if someone is excited about what's going on on screen, but but mm -hmm. on one hand, you have these paid commentators, and they just are good at what they do, and so it's business, you know, f for them. Um, there, there's probably uh, some genuine people in the audience that are pretty excited about this is really going well. Oh heck yeah! I mean, it it would be how I would watch a football match. I would get excited when my team is on the red line and they're about to take it in. Yeah, I can, I get that, but. I don't. I suspect that the vast majority of people, I don't know. I, I I've got to be careful here. But but if you don't really, if you're like me and you don't know what's going on in this game, you can't get excited. You don't know what's going on. So so if you're like me in that sense, I'm more asking the question. Well, why should I be as excited about this as you are? You know, I don't feel the hype sometimes. I am just personally proud of you for dropping the one term you understood of football into a conversation. The red line. The red line, yes. <laughs> oh uh, no, I'm, I'm more knowledge about football than you may know, even though I am South African. 
Uh, are we talking it. about American football? Are we talking football? American, yeah. American, oh yeah. No, 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 football. Okay, football. good. There, there's football. no red flag in soccer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, but it's, I come from a rugby background. I don't background, know, I don't so. watch soccer. I have no clue. You could tell me all day long these things, and I'd be like, oh, really? Okay. Like, yeah, that's one sport. It's kind of like one being, sport I would not go. You know in Hup, you know in Hupa, when you're done crossing the ramps and you're on that last little stretch where you just got to walk into the end? That's the red yeah. line. Yeah, 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 the red zone. No, Let's bring it into Swotor. No, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm talking about translate. soccer. That's very good. It's soccer, I don't get. I don't, I don't get it. Anyways, so um, how about that straw poll? Anybody want to read that? <laughs> That's the best transition really ever. into actual sports. <laughs> Let's start I talking we about something that matters, that. man. <laughs> oh, I don't, I, like I said, I don't think we're going to be able to avoid it tonight at all. So Elise, uh, what do you want to, uh, okay, I'll tell you what, let's make sure that everybody knows that the question is about to come to chat. And there are I qu uh, answers. There are a lot of answers, so let it play out before you vote. Yes. I think that I is nine, but I am guessing. Yes. Because J is 10, I remember that, so there you go. Ah. So, okay, so the question of the week, Elise, if you'd like to guide us through it as we go. If Swotor created an esports league, what events would be most ex exciting to watch? I'm having speaking problems today. A, okay, is this numbers or letters? Um, let's letters. do letters. Okay. A, timed operation completions. B, PVP. C, GSF. D, timed arena matches. E, timed flashpoint completions, F time data cron farming, G stronghold decorating. I know who put that one in. <laughs> H, what is an eSport? And I, no thank you. Well, Elise, I'd like to buy a vowel. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to buy a J. I'm, I'm gonna say. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say one of them is a vowel that I picked, and the other one is definitely not. So I have two answers to this, just, you know, just so you know. Just throw that out there. Does it, does it spell high? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Two <laughs> answers to this? <laughs> does it spell high? <laughs> if so come together, my funny. thing is, I didn't know what they were, of course, until we were like, let's do this topic, and I'm like, I literally will have zero things to say. I must research. So I researched and I was like, oh my gosh, this is a thing. Like, this is real. So, I mean, if I were going to sit and industry. watch people, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't watch this stuff, okay? Just let me live my life. You're going to now. That's for sure. So, anyways, <laughs> if I were going to do this, I would vote A, timed operation completions, because. I remember one time a group I was in, we did the nightmare around, I think it was of EV and we were like trying to do it a certain amount of time. And it was really fun. Cause back then the level cap was a lot shorter. Things were different and it was, it was still always easy, but it wasn't as easy. And I was like, yes, we can do this. We can do this. And I remember running through to the end and we're like, you know, whoever gets the highest numbers. Cause we were in star parts or something like that is Whoever gets the highest numbers on the last fight, you know, gets X prize or whatever. And it was actually a really fun competition. And, like, all of us really put in everything we had. And it was a fun time. So, for me, if I were going to go watch other people, it would have to be something like that, Star Wars-wise, to keep me interested. I would want to be seeing, like, eight people or 16 people, like, throwing in and giving it everything they have, all for a goal. And at the end, just being, like, spiking a football in their face, that kind of thing. Or a hot ball, if you would. I'd be fine with that. Yeah, so uh, what do you think, uh, Magic, about if they were doing timed? Like if you're running EV uh, Nightmare, for instance. There is no EV Nightmare, isn't there? It's just hard mode now? Not anymore. There used okay. to be, yeah. Yeah, say, say back in the day it was EV Nightmare, and they had two teams running it simultaneously, and each team could keep an eye on what the other team was doing or how or at their progress. That would be fun because I can think of a couple of guilds I've been in that we were highly competitive even with each other. And it was like, we, we wouldn't even be in a separate chat. We'd be in the same chat and we're like talking over each other and trying to like sabotage the other person trying to get to the end and stuff. So yeah, I've been in that situation. That was so much fun. That's the stuff 
I miss about some guild <laughs> content. So I would go watch people do that. I would be cheering people okay. and I would have a team then. Because I was getting ready to ask. The question wasn't what you would be doing, but would you watch it? It's the much thing different is, is if I won't you're watch not something. doing this it. This is true. Yeah. Somebody else is doing it. The exactly. difference is I won't watch it, though, unless it's something I would do. I played yeah, exactly. football until I got to high school when girls were no longer allowed to play football. Okay, so I watched that. I played softball because I wasn't allowed to play baseball. <coughs> <Watch really. coughs> Sorry. I would stab <laughs> you. <laughs> that is not a thing, and there's it's no not, way It's not, okay, I'll just, I'll just look this way then. Yeah, you look that way because that's not real. That's garbage, all right? So anyways, yeah. <clears throat> if I'm not, if I'm not the type, if I'm not into that, like I wouldn't do it, then I'm not going to watch it. So that's well, why I, mean, I, I think I think that ties speaking. directly into what Sakari or even Elise was saying before. In a lot of ways, I'm not going to watch any games esports league if I don't have any idea what it's about. I mean, like CS:GO. Okay, at least you understand that it's a first-person shooter, so there's some kind of crossover across multiple game genres with that. And that's kind of how League of Legends can pull it off too, because there's also Dota tournaments and, you know, Heroes of the Storm tournaments, like MOBA as a genre has multiple games within it. So um, it's it's a way to look at it. So I could say, I mean, to me, that actually makes a ton of sense. I am the most familiar with operations front to back. So if I were to see anything, that's the one I could identify them with. And I could also be sitting in there and judging them and saying, oh, man, they could have taken this shortcut and shaved off 10 seconds from yeah. their time, you know? That, like or, that was or, a sloppy pool. Right, or EV, when you're going from Garge and you're heading towards the puzzle boss, oh, they pulled a group, what a bunch of dumbasses, you know? Yeah, that's going like, to cost them 30 seconds right there. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, I can I can totally identify. And since I have interjected here, I'll say that as for myself, I've actually selected GSF. Uh, and primarily <laughs> because I think that that's something that I... The thing is, with any of these topics, I feel like they would need to actually have a uh, sports commentator mode, some kind of spectator mode where they could control camera angle and be moving around the theater, around the players themselves as the games or operations or whatever were going on. But for GSF, I think it would actually play out really well. I know that it doesn't have as much traction as it used to, but it is three-dimensional. It is space combat, and generally across the board, I prefer objective-based over the you know death match or arena match, whatever you want to call whichever platform, but it is, uh, and it has the ability to have more players in it. So if I mm -hmm. had a, a spectator view or the commentator did where they could zoom out, show all the forces across the map, you know, there's no cloud of war for the guy who's commentating. So, you know, where every different one is, and then you can zoom on to different areas as different skirmishes are going on and stuff like that. I feel like there's a lot of opportunity there. Um, and, and I think that I would really enjoy it. But again, just like magic back in the day, I was actually, really hardcore on gsf you know maxed out all my ships and knew how to you know hot swap to the to the best ship for the occasion and that sort of thing so uh i would enjoy it i also mentioned because the chat room asked why i chose gsf uh because we only said objective based pvp is b we didn't pull out hutball as rj i would do a <laughs> hutball league really a hutball <laughs> league yeah i, I love yeah. hutball yeah um I'm, i i might would... add somebody did not put that as an option just I know, because <laughs> like a fool, I didn't think about the one most commonly requested thing that the game has had since launch. Well, <laughs> hotball is one of those things that people love it or they hate it. I, there are people that'll get out of hotball oh, games just because it's hotball. So. I'm terrible at it, but I love the idea that I could be good at it. And the other day, I scored like four times on my healer Merc, and I was like, yeah, maybe there's a chance, yeah. And then I like died hardcore the next yeah. couple matches, and I'm like, forget it, I quit. Hotball is the <laughs> one that gets me the most riled up because people don't think tactically about or strategically uh -huh. about oh. how they play. And oh, so yeah. I, could, I could see that being a really good get them, get them angry eSport, you know. You could actually well, have rot, <laughs> rot worm, you know, rot worm and frog dog you know, and the nice thing of, about we, we Hutball have is the, uniforms. the other <laughs> benefit to Hutball is the fact that it's actually quite unique compared to many other games. It is something that makes Wotor kind of stand apart from all the other game modes. And to to make my point, uh, Almighty Swotor Gamer, a Star Wars gamer, I guess, Hutball League, kill me right now <laughs> in chat. <laughs> so there you go. There, there's our first throw up of the night. And, and usually that's the case, right? It is those ones that engender the, the most intense emotional response that end up being able to gain some traction. Yeah, because people want to see it. They're like, man, I'm terrible at this. I want to see if these people are good or if they suck or it's like, 
I hate this so much. I'm going to go root for all of them to lose. Or it's, I love this so much. I want to win. I want my team to win. It's just emotions all over. And that's usually the most successful one. Right. Well, I am sending the results uh, at this time to chat. We're going to see how everybody else is doing. Uh, for timed operations completions, we have two. PVP, interestingly enough, got zero. GSF won, of course, because Redna said so. Timed, <laughs> timed <laughs> arena matches. Four votes for that. How interesting. Uh, timed flashpoint completions, n uh, nothing. And uh, Okay, well, flashpoint, yeah. Timed datacron farming, zero. Stronghold decorating, two. Was it you, Elise? <laughs> that was a gem or someone else who pitched in there with you. That's hilarious. Uh, what's an esports zero and no thank you zero so our chat is very different it seems to um the uh community poll we put out. <laughs> but we will discuss that here shortly i guess I uh, actually nobody asked me yeah did elise say what she would vote for no go no. for it i haven't um, said either well i didn't actually vote in the poll however i would have voted for stronghold decorating for mm -hmm. the you didn't know, make one <laughs> um for just a joke so, <laughs> just as a joke um, <laughs> um the only well, at least would have I, front row seat tickets for that word i need some tips um I, I the only thing that i would watch would be pvp so yeah the objective based pvp um i would i did timed operation completions just has absolutely no like pull for me at <laughs> all um gsf has been interesting to do but my vision has always been running into a asteroid and dying or getting completely faced <laughs> by one of those freaking sniper ships or whatever so um I just, I've not been able to actually experience the amazingness of GSF personally. Perhaps if I actually had more of a pulled out view where they could zoom in and zoom back out and mm. I could actually see more of a global you know, the perspective. Movements across, right, right. Maybe I would find it more interesting. Um, mm. But yeah, I mean, that would pretty much be it. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, if I was to answer this, there's. I actually kind of wish that this was one a multiple selection. I was hoping it was when it was my time to vote, and I clicked one, and then I clicked yeah, the other, too, and then and then when I when it turned off the the first one I clicked, I was like, oh, okay. So I've got to pick my my favorite of all of these, but I would actually like to vote for more than one in this. I think PVP by by and large is would have been great. I think um, Void Star as a hotball match would be fantastic. It's my favorite. Or, or as a, as a eSport, <laughs> sorry. I think Hutball would do just fine as well. There's a lot of, you know, generic PvP stuff that... that mm -hmm. uh, I think all of the PvP generally would do pretty well. And, I, and we'll talk about re community results here in a second. GSF, same kind of a thing. Red and I'm with you on that. I think that GSF would be a blast. Especially with what you said with, like, the, uh, the a more global perspective from the, fr for the commentators. I think if they could get, a, like, a third-party camera... That would do very well. Um, I'm not so hot on on things like timed runs. Flashpoints, I don't care. Um, I, I, I can see <laughs> I can see tough operations. Like if we were doing a hard mode, op like a veteran mode operation maybe, and two teams competing simultaneously to get through it as fast as possible where they're aware of how each other are doing. Um, and and um, you could kind of pan between both at the same time. You know, like, uh, I don't know how they'd present that, but where you're going from one to the other to see what kind of progress they're making. Be a, I, I think, think we totally could be a split screen. I think it would be a split yeah. screen. Yeah, like a split screen. See. Something like this. And they would go screen. off to the actual, like, people in the seats because that's what they do yeah. in the eat sports thing and, and then, then come back totally to the color and then they do the other side. We totally need a Gladys informa information statement every time a boss goes down. Team two has taken down boss number one. <laughs> yeah. I think you know, that so would be a blast. Start I... feeling stressed. Oh crap! They already got it. We're still in the yeah. middle of this fight. <laughs> so everybody's DPSing as hard as they can. I think that'd be a blast. Like, like that is how I would want to see that. I don't care about the time runs. So forget the time runs. Um, speaking of, you know, last week's discussion, I think some mini games. You know, I think we may there may be some. Um, like if they were comment, it'd be hard to comment on, but like swoop racing, for instance, I think you could probably oh, have was... some have some fun commenting on that kind of a thing. Um, but yeah, for the, for the most part, that would be me. I, I can't imagine anyone doing datacron farming <laughs> competitively. 
<laughs> but the thing is, that's because it's the closest thing. That, that's why I put it in there. Closest thing to platforming we have in the game, right? And yeah. it definitely lends itself to opportunities of bloopers. Like, here's this moron. He was in first place going into the tournament, and he spent 15 minutes on Narshada. <laughs> and then he and then he fell, and now now he's got to clean out some mobs. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that attacked him, and then they killed yeah. him. Oh, he he's aggroed, and he's not playing a vanished character. <laughs> That's yeah. not really, I guess it sort of is montage worthy, but I don't know. That's why I was like, eh. right. No, I, know. I can't like I think it's be complex. like, yo, guys, did you see this move? No. <laughs> but you know, there are also That's tournaments me. like who can beat the original Super Mario Brothers the fastest, you know, uh -huh. simultaneously. Yeah. I mean, there are people that get into that. So right. it's certainly, yeah. I would lose so bad. But I, I definitely think, I think the one I would have the most fun watching. Would, it, we didn't have that on the list, but it was what are we talking about where you have simultaneous um, operations runs. I think that would be great. Um, but the one I voted for was timed arena matches. I think um, just, the, just the... Because especially if it's ranked, you have very good players. They're very well geared. They know their classes. They know the other classes. They know how to counter each other. I think there's a lot there where if, if you are a commentator who knows what all everybody is doing and when they use their their breaker and when they use i think there's a lot of a lot of good commentary that you can have in that kind of arena so that'd probably be number two for me behind the uh the competitive uh, operations runs which our chat room certainly agrees with yeah we had a few Rock people that voted that with real me. results <laughs> yes at least uh, would you like to read out our real uh, results yet see what happened sure. in the, the community poll so the results for the um, actual poll of the community, number one was with 72 votes. Oh, and we had a total of 159. I kind of skipped that. Um, so of 159, 72 votes were, no thank you. Mm -hmm. um, second was PVP with a total of 39 votes. Third is time operations completions with 18 votes or 11%. And fourth is, oh wow, that was loud. Um, fourth is GSF with um, 11 votes or 7%. Um, next is what is an eSport with six votes or 4%. Um, time flashpoint completions with five votes, stronghold decorating with five votes. Um, yeah, it's getting complicated. <laughs> arena and... matches with just two. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't very popular. Data crime farm farming is one vote. Maybe it's because of how lopsided arena. Is. Someone mentioned that on Reddit that arena matches now they feel are incredibly lopsided. And there's too many people who don't know what they're doing. And it doesn't make it fun. So yeah, I imagine that's reflected in their desire to want to watch. <sighs> That is so true. That's why I would make it about ranked. I would definitely, you know, the people that know what they're doing and know how to counter certain techniques from other classes, because they basically know every class in the game and they know how people behave and, and what, you know. Yeah, you know what's up when a merc or a commando comes in there and they shoot their net at you before you pop your god bubble and you're like, dang it, I'm playing with someone who knows what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, otherwise it's like, oh, I've got my god bubble, I've got this and this, I can just I'll roll all over these people. That's the difference of the match for me. If one of them come in and they know what they're doing, I'm like, crap. Yeah, then you got to run. <laughs> but yeah, it, yeah. interesting, it, it was interesting to me that 45%, so almost one in two votes were people saying, no thanks, not interested at all. Which, you know, to me that was fantastic. It was very interesting. And then after that, one in four said PvP. So, so, so basically that third person was the one that broke down into everything after that. Or the, the fourth person. So, like, if you had four people that took this poll, one would have said PvP, and the other two would have said no, thank you, and then that other one couldn't make up his mind or whatever else. Mm -hmm. So, to me, it was this is actually pretty definitive. A, a I think people, by and large, hate esports <laughs> in Swotor. <laughs> I don't want to see it in this game. Oh, at you all. think that's what it means? Okay. Okay. I would well, argue that if Bioware was saying, "Hey, we're putting up a purse of a million dollars. We've got X amount of people competing in X event. One a." boatload people would show up and start practicing their butts off because right. hey the game's dead and no one's playing so i could probably win and two i think there'd be a lot of people watching to see who won money from bio or actually putting money into their game <laughs> or That's out, out of their game is the case maybe um well before we move on to the discussion section 
Um, we had a couple of comments on Reddit that I found entertaining, and not the other ones. These are different than the ones I read earlier. Although the Umbrella Corp one was just really funny. You got to, you've got to um, tell them that. That one was hilarious. Oh, okay. So someone said um, on Reddit, <laughs> I love this. This kind of thinking is the reason things like Umbrella Corp exists. Please know. <laughs> it was awesome. Um, if you don't know what Umbrella Corp is, go ahead and Google Resident Evil. Yes. <laughs> yeah. T virus. Um, so Vasmi from Vasmi Gaming. Um, commented and said, I always thought Hutball League would have been fun back when 8v8 ranked was a thing. Mm -hmm. So, and I saw another couple of comments, I thought, or maybe it was just one more about it being uh, 8 versus 8 would have been entertaining. Maybe that Which was just Which is nice, somewhere. because that's where PvP versus Arena falls in. PvP is inherently 8-player, objective-based, and that was our highest votes. Um, uh, oh, yeah, somebody said, I missed the days when that one European guy would do cast the high end rank eights. I don't know what that means. Anyway, um, then Switcherisa said, um, PvP, there's too many issues with desynced and bug bugged abilities like leaps. I would want there to be esports of something that wasn't 100%, that isn't 100% working to start with. I wouldn't want there to be esports right. of something that isn't 100%. So, so susceptible to, to bugs. Now, Not to mention balanced issues. And then so she said, saying time no to Star Wars. Well, she's saying no of making it. Well, the vast majority of any PvP. Um, no, so it's if runs, they actually had a competition for this. It was kind of a mess. They did, yeah. That was the Coratani. Well, they the Coratani were going to. They yeah, that, and that's the thing. So, so just so that anybody that hasn't been playing the game for too long is aware, there was proposed with the release of Ravtos the a timed run doing ravagers i think the uh it was intended that leading up to the finals was going to be ravagers and the finals was going to be temple of sacrifice or something along those lines but either way basically they did it right they they proposed it right after they launched the expansion and of course there were, this expansion when it comes to the operations actually had some of the most significantly impactful and detrimental bugs <laughs> right. that they had ever launched with. Koratani was awful. Koratani. And that's that's what killed that whole thing. Yeah, there yeah. and yeah. even um Underlurker. I mean there were some serious, serious bugs, like straight up bugs that, you know, game breaking bugs. And because they couldn't get those fixed in time, they decided to cancel it entirely. And we've never heard of it since. But going into it, there was actually a massive amount of enthusiasm because it was really exciting to consider, oh my gosh, Bioware is actually going to be giving real-world rewards for mm. doing something interesting competitive in their game. And like we were that... all excited about the level of, of interest this would generate in SWOTOR, and I think it would be healthy for the community. There's a lot of us who are like, okay, I, I don't care a fig about this, but I'm so glad that they're doing some promotion <laughs> of this game, you know. But so. isn't this the same time that they gave that award to that one guild for them getting world first and then they dusted? Well, they didn't. I had Zors. Heard about dusting, You're talking they, about Zors. Yeah. Zors yeah. completed they left. it. They were told that there wasn't going to be another game or another operation for two years, so they left. That was right. Which yeah. was completely reasonable. I wouldn't have kept playing either. From their gameplay so, style, they were finished. They beat I mean, the game. I I get that, but I mean, they wouldn't have been the only ones to have come, got it, and then left. So, I mean, I don't... possible, but that's, I mean, unless you start making a pattern of repetitive competitions in various formats, especially since they were just getting around to making every single operation level relevant, you could start doing that. Also, something I would point out, just because my time is limited, spoiler warning, I have to leave early. Um, the notion that bugs or imbalance is going to be something that prevents an entertaining environment, I think, is an inherently flawed notion. If you're looking for perfection, you're never going to find it. Mm -hmm. If you instead embrace the fact that there are imbalances or bugs or whatever, but they're at least dependable, reliable, understandable, and something that you can strategize around, I'm okay with those things existing because you should include that as a part of the competition. It's totally okay. If you can you know, completely avoid one boss in an operation during a timed run and still complete the operation, 
then I'm okay with that. That's a creative so are you, means. Are you advocating exploiting in the midst of this? <laughs> I think I that BioWare needs to actually use the actual definition of an exploit, which would be exploiting systems with third-party software in order to do something that wasn't designed in the game, as opposed to <laughs> taking advantage of a bug because they programmed it poorly. Yes, yes, I do think that they should. And quite frankly, regardless, like they should say, in, their, in, in any of these competitions, the game is as it is. Take advantage of it as best you can. Now, yes, if you're using third-party software to actually right. break the game in a way to get an, a performance advantage, that's a totally d different thing. And in fact, they should, you know, be liable to fines for trying to cheat in a in a tournament environment that way. Right. But well, that would be a disqualification. I mean, allowing gamers to be creative by utilizing how the game is actually presented and letting everybody be aware of that. Right? They're all competing together. They're right. all pretty much going to be aware of all those same things, and I, I don't have a problem. Now, I know that's a totally contentious perspective, but that's my attitude. It's just like any of these people that do timed runs with Super Mario Brothers. They take advantage of the fact that the game doesn't get updates, and there are things that are buggy, and if you jump this way, that way, you know, you can perfectly time it and get speed yeah. boosts. The game, the game is respected and used as a tool as it is. Exactly. Ooh, it's, it's, right. it's them engaging with the game as, as a tool, to help them to get it done. So, yeah, no, I, I think I agree with that perspective. But, but that said, I agree. also do agree that there are some things. Like, if there is such a significant uh, class balance issue that you walk in with eight vanguards and the other team has to have eight vanguards or else they're not going to be competitive, I don't like that. I don't... I mean... Granted, yeah, that could be totally successful, but that also is totally boring. <laughs> yeah, no, they would. I, I would agree that they would probably have to for this kind of a thing. They would have to have uh, limitations in the rules, like for instance, you need to have a standard eight-man team: two tanks, two healers, four DPS. That's what you go in there with. Now, how yeah. you organize that, and, and maybe even say, okay, of the DPS, two need to be ranged, two need to be melee, and and standardize the layout of the team, and then. After that, have people go in? Well, I don't know necessarily about two range, two melee, because that's really limiting. I totally get the tanks, because you have three options for tanks. I get the healers, because you have three options for healers. But if you're going to limit your DPS, then you have to fight amongst the people in your DPS that, who gets to claim what. What if all four of them are better at melee? Well, you know, screw you. You're going to have to pick two ranged, you know? Yeah, well, someone's well, going to play and a tank. Actually, that would be that would so. be more interesting under formats, right? There are different game formats, different tournament formats. Right. So this one has a strict two of each format. This one isn't, you know, all in. Choose what you want. This yeah. one says what it doesn't matter do you what your play? game composition is, but you need to have one of every class, you know? Yeah. Or one of every advanced class, you know? Like, you could do that sort of thing and let people choose their roles. There, there are different ways that you could do it. There are different formats. Generally, I would actually expect that PvP environments are going to be more commonly uh, enjoyed from a competitive environment, just because most esports that have caught on and become largely successful are, you know, people playing against people, less people playing against the pre-programmed machine. Um, but you know, that's not to say that it couldn't be creative. Um, the reason is for that, from what I understand. Um, thank you, PAX East, um, is because each game is different. When you play against right. people, every match is different. And that's another reason why MOBAs and Battle Royale being the flavor of the months, but also because both of those games, I'm sure, were designed somewhat with thinking about how it's going to play on Twitch. It seems to be very right. common now. I'm actually some of these newer games that they're actually making the game, and that question is coming around: How would this play on Twitch? Yeah, I'm well, actually and, amazed. And either solo versus everyone, or team versus team. The other thing that is yeah. drawn out from that is emotion. You get people raging at each other, and you get people raging at the other team, and a lot of people just like to see the overreaction. That's another <laughs> That's aspect true. of it, right? Like, oh, I get oh, to yeah. listen in on this team's headsets. Oh, my gosh, listen to the way they're talking. You know, it's like they're totally coming people like the drama. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, I, I, I'm, I was going to say that people I'm, drama? I am amazed <laughs> at how many games I've installed lately that I'm thinking, hey, let me put this on my box. Let me stream this that can, are, are really not good for streams. You can't, you know, um, t take, for instance, Battlefront. Let me talk about Battlefront 2 for a second. I think Battlefront 2 would be pretty 
pretty you could use that in some competitions i think if you had some set teams um what about the ways. ewok hunt yeah this I've latest heard about <laughs> yeah a lot of people are, are having a lot of fun with this but um <laughs> You know, I just think I got in there, got the the options set up. As a streamer, I have two screens, so I like to get it set up to where uh, the sound is persistent even when the window isn't focused because I want that sound coming through, even if I'll tab to something else. And there was no way to set that option in Battlefront 2. So there there is a lot of, you would think that they would put all those options in there thinking, hey, this is going to be streamed. Let's make sure we can get you know enough out there and, and provide streamers the options to to basically help us advertise our game but i'm amazed uh, kind of just speaking a little bit to your point redna about how many games kind of kind of it just doesn't occur to the development group that they should uh, optimize for that so well I, I mean the game also needs to support it um i think one of the reasons why sotor hasn't done it is guild war 2's tried to do it and it was not successful in the esports so yeah so um you got to wonder whether or not what you have to offer is going to get picked up and you also have things like bungie where bungie at least i'm fairly certain they're still doing it in destiny 2 but i can speak from experience with destiny 1 and that they actually had things called bungie bounties and stuff where people were um would play the matches and if um the rest of the community beat them. They got a special emblem that you could only get for either playing on that person's fire team or playing against that person and beating them. Mm-hmm. Um, Bungie would get on and play, and then it would go for a certain time frame, and that person, a streamer, would you know. So it was the, the developers and a person were working together for streaming. Now that was streaming, not esports, but. Um, the, I guess the point I'm trying to make is the developers were actively engaged. Yeah. Well, to a goal. What those so, what those two things have in common is third party viewers. There's me as a first person. This the game is a second person. What I'm interacting with. And then you have a third party person who's watching over my shoulder, seeing what I'm doing. Um, and both of those need to be entertaining to a viewer. I mm-hmm. think that's why people do esports, is because they can take a viewer looking over your shoulder and make it really entertaining. And um, also, and, and both of them have a have a, the benefit of being um, ad, like an advert, basically free advertising for the the company that makes the game, right? Like streaming. It's a, it's a lot more broken down, a lot more granular in who all they're reaching as opposed to, boom, here's one big event. But it, 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 there's a sense in which it's almost kind of like the same thing. There's just more more awards and more hype and more that they that the company actually puts behind an actual esports event. So, um, I, you know, I, I do think there's, there's a lot where the, we could probably definitely unpack it more, but like the overlap between streaming and esports and you know how how a game supports both of those knowing essentially one's just a microcosm of the other in a right. sense right well that's a whole nother discussion it is it is yeah <laughs> i want to touch on it but i don't really want to unpack it here so i mean a lot touch of those... lightly with a feather but not you know actually poke it yes <laughs> we don't, because like that. <laughs> oozy stuff comes out <laughs> um a lot of those uh, the pro gamers are also streamers and sometimes that can be good and it can also get them in trouble so yeah. um that's all i'm going to say with that but um yeah that's yeah. good that's how we've had the twitch fail videos so um <laughs> at this stage we've kind of touched on a lot of this i'm sure that there's a lot more to say there's a lot more that we could go into um, with regard to Sw- to SWOTOR and how it does these things, my suggestion is if we want to do that, let's uh, maybe belay that and uh, do that in a forthcoming um, episode. Um, for now, uh, Redna mentioned a little earlier that he, he has to uh, run a little early. He's got an appointment tonight. So to respect him, I don't really want to continue without him being here if, if we can help it. So uh, are we okay um, calling it at this point? At least do you have anything else that you'd like to say to this uh, topic before we do? Magic, what about you? Well, I'm sure if I get Magic Baby in here, she can squeal about it for a little bit. But uh, <laughs> me personally, mm. as you can tell, I've been super flipping chatty through this whole thing. So, uh, <laughs> no, I think I'm good. I said my piece, and 
here's magic bait. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, I would watch it if I could get uh, Kidley or JT announcing it, if it was timed operation runs, and I previously didn't know what any of this was about, and I don't watch them, and my care is pretty much hovering around the, like, one to two area. So <laughs> that's in a summary how I feel about it. <laughs> what about you, Elise? Sakari, you guys have anything else? Anything I would like to see it. I would love to see some esports in Swotor. Like I have the same attitude I had last week about the uh, about the mini games. I don't think it's going to happen, <laughs> and I'm okay with that. No. You know, I'd rather them. I'd rather them focus on things that matter more. That they can get a lot more. At least I, as a player, could get a lot more bang for my buck. But I, yeah, I, in a perfect world where I could have everything I want, yes, I would have loved to have seen a little more of it. So that's kind of my. Well. Perfect worlds don't exist. I but know. If that were true, we wouldn't have people walking through the walls in video games. But anyways, thank you every single person who happened to jump in and watch us and chit chat and help us out with the polls. Thanks for giving us our feedback and just generally being here, loving the game, loving this and interacting. We appreciate it. We love you guys. Even the trolls. Not like we've never trolled or anything like that. <laughs> But thank you so much. You're greatly oh. appreciated. And thank you to our Patreons. We really, really appreciate it. You guys are really awesome. Yes, Thanks. absolutely. Thank you, guys. Um, with that said, that brings us to the end of the episode. The council is hereby adjourned. If you'd like to reach us, you can email us at the council at the council uh, You can find Elise on Twitter at abrown35. Magic Ace is there at the Magic Ace. And that is how you spell her name um, on her little label there as well. Same way. Uh, Redna, you can reach at R3DN4. And, of course, myself, Sakari, at I am Sakari. Uh, don't forget to visit our website at thecouncilswotor.com. Follow us on social media. And don't forget, as we always say, our Patreon page, patreon.com slash thecouncilswotor. Uh, that is it for us this week, guys. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us. And the closing line, you ready for this? Goodbye, Spewy. I'll never forget you. <laughs> I love that in that more than I did the entire Warrior storyline. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have a great week. We'll see you later. I understand. You are on this council, but we do not grant you the rank of master. What? How can you do this? This is outrageous. It's unfair. How can you be on the council and not be a master? Take a seat, young Skywalker. Forgive me, master.